Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue. I'm the Black Powder Editor for Guns of the Old West Magazine. And today we've got a real treat. We are going to be shooting one of the classic single actions of the Old West. Now, this is Smith & Wesson's new model number three. This is an actual original. It belongs to a friend of mine named Jay Harrell, better known as Roughshod in cowboy circles. And this may be the best single action of the 19th century. A lot of experts thought so. So, let's take it out to the range and see what this old baby will do. Smith & Wesson's new model number three was their last single action revolver. And it was a replacement for the Russian model, which you see on top. And the new model number three, of course, is on the bottom. Now, it's very much like the Russian, but they changed some features that were really unpopular on the American market. Uh, the Americans really did not like that hump on the grip at all. It made it very difficult to cock the gun one-handed. And in fact, they, uh, they subtly redesigned the grip of the new model number three. And it's a very easy gun to cock and hold. It's got a very natural grip, not quite as, as straight up and down as the Russian's grip. They also took the spur off of the trigger guard, which Americans just hated. In fact, a lot of the Russian revolvers using the American West had that guard, that spur ground off. And they shortened up the uh, extractor uh, and they gave the barrel a more streamlined appearance. And they kept the same caliber, which is 44 Russian, and the same really bad sighting system uh, of just two very narrow posts and a very thin front blade. But this was considered one of the great shooting guns of the 19th century. A lot of target shooters preferred this uh, by a wide margin over the Colt. And the 44 Russian round, which is no slouch, is a very intrinsically accurate round that eventually grew into the 44 Special and the 44 Magnum. So let's take this baby out and see how it does. Well, Evil Roy awaits. And we've got the Smith & Wesson new model number three. And uh, this is certainly not a gun you'd use for cowboy action shooting. It should be shot rarely, but they are sweet to shoot. Now, I've never shot this one of Jay's, so we'll see where it's heading, and we'll take it from there. Okay, brake top, we pull open this latch, eject the cartridges, which was a big boon during the 19th century, and I can see why it's, it's sticking. I'm going to try to get this on camera and uh, see if I can get the light on it. I can see right in there that the firing pin hole is enlarged, and that's causing the primers to back up into it. So we'll shoot this gun a little bit, but not much. It's, uh, it's too beautiful an old girl to take a chance on doing any damage to it. But I do love this gun, and I'll tell you what. Years ago, Smith & Wesson's Performance Center made a reissue of the Schofield. And I think that was a mistake. This is a gun that the Performance Center should have brought back. Uh, I would love to have one of these. So as you can see, my buddy Jay's new model number three has this really cool looking set of vintage ivory grips. Uh, the finish on the gun has pretty much been worn away, and the grips are showing their age, but they kind of go together to make this a very cool-looking package. 